ladies and gentlemen, my very good friend, Mons, should have known from the many years together that it's not possible to say what I was told about. <laughs> Let me start by thanking the Baltic Development Forum and the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy for arranging this conference. I'm happy to have the chance to say a few words about the Nordic traditions for democracy and cultural policy and the relations across the Baltic Sea. I believe that culture is essential to all societies and all politics. In fact, it is the base for all the rest. I'm not the only one believing that. Jean Monnet, one of the architects of the European Union is often attributed the following quote. If we were to start all over again, we would start with the culture. The meaning is very clear. Culture is a glue that holds us together in societies and across borders. There can be no society, democracy or international cooperation without cultural connections between persons and peoples. And I will give you a little experience of mine. In the process preparing my new strategy for children's meeting, arts and culture, we ask pupils at eight years, what does culture mean? They sought and sought. And a boy said, I think I have heard this word before. <laughs> and then one of the girls said, and I quote, first a person made a sculpture, some art, and around this comes culture. I think that's a very good answer. And I add that both the sculpture and the culture around this are standing, we are standing on this, a base of common culture, like I couldn't read what I have. I couldn't, yeah. I try again. And I add that both the sculpture and the culture around this are standing, we are standing on a base of common culture, like I would like to know what I have. <laughs> Our history and the way we have organized our society. Okay, sorry. The close relationship between the Nordic countries is no exemption. We share a common tradition for active participation in society. We do that through participation in a variety of associations and organizations. The football club, the school board, political parties. We learn that it matters to give our opinion. Learn that the opinion of the farmer is as, is as valuable as the opinion of the scholar. The Danish poet and educator, NSF Grundtvig, would agree on the importance of education and involvement of all people as a precondition for true democracy. Just as there is a Nordic way of democracy, there is a Nordic way of supporting arts and culture we call it at arm's length. The principle of arm's length is based on the idea that it should not just be the scholar or the politicians deciding what is best for the people. When it comes to art and culture, we should let the artists in on the decisions. In Denmark, this also applies to cultural diplomacy. We try to maintain the focus on culture rather than diplomacy when we engage in cultural diplomacy. I would characterize our approach as bottom-up. By bottom-up, I mean allowing artists, cultural professionals, and institutions to work together and choose their focus without control from politicians or civil servants. For Julius Bumholt, the first Danish minister for culture, the motto for founding the arts and culture was, and I quote, one must support, but not steer. I fully agree with that. 
And I think it also applies to cultural diplomacy of exchange, even though these fields often involve <coughs> governments. Arts and culture plays a unique part in building understanding between peoples and nations. And I recognized the importance of arts and culture and creativity in economic development, in social coherence, and in international relations. But I also strongly believe that the value of arts and culture is easily lost if we only expect specific results or outcomes from it. As an example, a memorandum of understanding between China and Denmark was recently signed as part of a Danish emphasis on cultural exchange with China. It has a focus on exchange of exhibitions and professionals, but the content is left to the judgment of the artists and cultural professionals. They will cooperate based in, on, on their interest and their deep experience. They decide what to do with whom, not the politicians or civil servants. This will allow a focus on the professionalism, quality and relevance of the specific artistic or cultural projects. Nordic culture is currently getting a lot of international attention, but that should not make us forget our neighboring countries around the Baltic Sea. We are bound together across borders by economic relations, by our history and geography, by new communication channels and by a multitude of common global and regional challenges. We must honestly and openly deal with our differences and similarities and enjoy, enjoy them. Especially the cultural connection between the Nordic and Baltic countries is worth stressing. We are small states to the north, neighboring to the big European Europe and the big states there. After the independence of Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania, it was important for the Nordic countries to recognize their neighbors once again and support the crucial process of democratization and civic development. The Nordic-Baltic cooperation of the 19, 1990s gave us valuable insights that we still benefit from today and others might learn from. But we need to refine our methods. This conference, I hope, will help make clear how to go on from here. I wish you all a fruitful conference.